the TCT Network brings you Rejoice. A connection of encouragement to build your faith and lift you to a new experience in God. Our program is specifically designed to bring you hope and the healing power of God through His Word and prayer. Now, here's today's Rejoice, hosted by Tom Nolan. Hello, thank you for tuning in to Rejoice. I'm so glad you could be with us. I have a great program in store for you today. We're going to talk a little bit about Israel. We as Christians should be supporting Israel. We want to do that, continue to pray for Israel. And so stay tuned. We're going to learn a lot of great things today. I want to remind you, if you need prayer, there's a number at the bottom of your screen, 1-800-232-9855. We have prayer partners standing by to pray for you whatever your need may be. But I'm here uh, joined with several great men of God here. I got Ben Kinchlow, the uh, founder of um, Americans for Israel. And uh, you've been given the title around here, something it's a, a little offensive to me, but I guess I can give it up <laughs> just to you of greatest television host of all time is what they keep telling me. So. Well, you know. <clears throat> You had to call it like it is, bro. You had to tell it like it is. <laughs> well, I am uh, so pleased to be able to have you with us here as a co-host today and helping with us here uh, promote Israel. Well, it's my privilege, my honor to talk about one of my favorite all-time subjects is the nation of Israel. And, you know, you mentioned that prayer. And, um, there are people who are on these phones right now who would be glad to agree with you in prayer for the state of Israel if you if you feel moved so moved when we're talking about it. So, Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Delighted yeah, thank you. And Earl Cox, the uh, Christian ambassador from Israel, and um, you've uh, been involved in numerous uh, presidential administrations here in the U.S., uh, of course been doing television broadcasting for a long time, and uh, you've joined with us several times here at TCT to uh, help spread your love of Israel. So thank you for being back with us My today. My pleasure. And, and Tom, by the way, I, you, you saw earlier that I'm Ben's gentleman's gentleman. You know that. You know, so I take care of this fellow right here. Okay. <laughs> you can also blame me for any mistakes that I make. You can lay it on him. All right. As long as it doesn't cost do me money, you're okay. <laughs> well, of, of course, they're joining with me again, but I want to introduce our special guest today is uh, Robert Potts. He's the marketing director for the Israel Ministry of Tourism in the Southern Region. That's correct. And uh, we're here in Greensboro, North Carolina. I should say that we're here at our station in WLXI. And uh, one of my favorite things about traveling the country to TCT's various stations is uh, connecting with people in the various areas. Now, in Illinois, we're connected with uh, Jill Daly uh, right. from uh, the office there right. that does the Midwest region, I think is what they call it there. And, That's right. Um, so uh, in Illinois, she's up in Chicago a few hours from us, and so we've uh, had the pleasure of uh, connecting with her and um, people that were in that position before. But it's good to be down here in the South and uh, thanks for coming and, down and, and get to uh, connect with you and, and hear a little bit about what you're doing in this region. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. It's wonderful. Um, uh, with the Ministry of Tourism, it's a great opportunity to tell other Christians around the country how important it is to travel to Israel and how important the nation is, not only to politically to the security of our nation, but spiritually as well. Uh, I was born and raised a Christian. Um, I grew up in South Mississippi and I've been in Atlanta for about 10 years now. And I've always had Israel as a special place in my heart. But um, I, I went for the first time in February of this year and uh, it opened my eyes to so much. Uh, so many of my friends asked me when I came back, what was it that you know, I took in? And I said, before I went, I knew what I believed. Coming back, I know why I believed it. Mm, to well. see on the ground where Jesus walked, where his disciples were found, how they lived their lives. It was incredible to experience that, to know how my faith connects to that, to that area. And when I came back and had this opportunity to work with the Ministry of Tourism, it, it was an opportunity I couldn't pass because I knew that I had a chance to impact other Christians and let them know, you know, it's, it's an incredible place to, to visit. You need to go as often as you can in your lifetime, how safe it is, how much fun it is, frankly, as well and just how much you can learn while there. Just truly enjoyed my experience, and I'm going to go back as often as I possibly can, and I want to make sure that every Christian knows how important it is to travel there as well. Absolutely. What I love about Israel, and um, you know, you talked about seeing where Jesus walks, and of course there's so much history to that nation, and right. just being able to go and, and, and see where the Bible comes from is one thing. But, uh, you know, Ben, you talked about uh, on a recent program something that I think I, I'm trying to remember. I don't think I've ever heard of anybody go to Israel that hasn't shared the exact same thought you did, which is when you get there, you feel like you're home. 
And uh, now we're not part of the Jewish people, but we've been grafted in. Um, and so as Christians, that's uh, the promised land. That's God's land. And so when you return to Israel or go for the first time, it feels like you're returning to Israel. It feels like you're going home. And so, I, you know, I think it's important for uh, Christians to not just go there to experience the history of seeing where Jesus walked, but, you know, for that feeling of uh, returning to God's kingdom. No, only that, but, you know, when you, you talk about... Christians and Jews really are a part of the same family. Yes. You know, we have the same God. Yeah. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the same God that we worship. Yes. All of our Western civilization, everything in the Western civilization, England, France, Germany, the modern Germany, all these countries, Italy, all these places, they're all founded on Judeo-Christian principles. Mm -hmm. The Bible is the basis for the civilized behavior in the mm. Western world. If people do not ascribe to the principles articulated in the Bible, which come from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which come from Israel, then their lifestyle and the way they conduct themselves is totally antithetical to what we believe in, in, in Western civilization. And Western civilization is totally different from those countries that are not subscribers to Western civilization. It's the only democracy in the exactly. Middle East, period. But that people don't understand sense. that. The things What's it we take for granted, you know. What, share with us, Ben, why Israel is so different than the rest of the Middle Eastern countries. I mean, they, they, Jews have been there for a long, long time, since 1948, it's been their state. You can you sum it up know. in a nutshell. The reason that Israel is so different from all the rest of the countries in, the, in that area is because Israel is the only one that's founded on the principles articulated in the Bible. But the Palestinians won't recognize Israel as a state, even though in 1948, the United Nations says Israel is a state. Everybody recognizes it, but yet Palestinians won't recognize it. Is that the problem? That's part of the problem. <clears throat> part of the problem is the, the truth of the matter is, except for people who, <clears throat> excuse me, but except for people who ascribe to these Judeo Christian principles, they only accept what they articulate as being the case in point. Mm -hmm. So they say Israel does not have the right to exist. So everybody who does not accept Judeo-Christian principles would agree with them. Is that not correct? Everybody in the Middle East ascribes to that thing, right? Exactly right. And I would say that here at home, one of the things that we're realizing is that with my generation coming up, you know, they're not being taught that Israel is the homeland for the Jews and that as Christians we should support that as well because it's not being taught in schools, not being taught in seminary quite as often as well. We've had conversations with those who come from different seminaries and they say it's not coming up in classes anymore. Um, when my dad went through seminary, they were pushed to go to Israel. They were told, you need to take this trip. You need to understand how important it is to your faith. And nowadays, that's not happening nearly as much. So those trips aren't happening, and people aren't understanding how crucial Israel is to their faith and what it means to them and the history of it as well. And the less that we are supportive of that, the less that the Middle East and the rest of the Middle East will understand we're there to support them, and they need to recognize Israel as a state as it has been for as long as we've all been around. Tom, last night we were having dinner together, and we were talking about the difference of what's happening between Islam and America and that it's happening on our institutions of higher learning. Yeah. And what Robert was referring to there, and it's so important that we recognize that these institutions of higher learning are not putting out what they used to put out. Right. What's happened, Saudi Arabia has come in over here, just an example, has come over and bought a lot of seats on our, on our universities. And the curriculum is changing, Harvard, Yale, and they're trying to get into some 600 colleges and universities that we have in the Christian community, they're trying to infiltrate even to that. But the purpose of they're sending their young people who have college degrees, already have it in their pocket, hanging on the wall, and then they send them to America and come into our universities and colleges and work with our freshmen who have no basis, no foundation whatsoever, and they're converting them over to Islam. Right. Am I right? That's why it's important that we start focusing on our universities and colleges. And that's exactly where Islam has been so smart. They've come in there recognized, we get these young people, we've got them then. Am I right? It starts with the education, of course. Uh, part of it's at home, part of it's in the universities. You've got to have that foundation at home to teach, teach your children how important Israel is and what it means to us as a nation and our faith, but also within the universities. You know, the social justice sure. movement has taken that on as well. And the fact that the news constantly shows that Israel is the oppressor and not the oppressed it's showing a narrative that is not helping them at all. And this small country, out of so many nations around the world, it's hard to overcome that in a lot of ways. And the universities help with that so much because they are the ones teaching students that will be the next generation how to lead in this. And frankly, they're not leading. 
That's exactly and Tom, right. And that, you know, Tom, you had indicated earlier that you folks are thinking about contemplating setting a studio up over in Israel someplace. It's so important what you're doing to educate people. That's the most important thing that we can get across to our people here living in this country. Let them see both sides. You can't look at one side and say our side is just right unless you know the other side. Yeah. But by bringing your cameras over there, having people over there to report <clears throat> and send back information, I really hope that your viewing audience will support you on that because that is so important. Well, and I'll say to that point, Earl, if I, if I may, um, when I went, my trip was with a group called the Israel Collective, which is a millennial focus group out of Christians United for Israel, and we all know how important they are to this subject. Mm -hmm. And when they took us, they said, we want to show you both sides of this argument. We want to show you every side of it so that you can understand what the Palestinians believe right. and what the Jews believe and what Christians of many different sides believe as well. And they didn't try to fully force an opinion on us. They wanted us to take it of our own. But we were able to see how they really live, what the news says and what the news doesn't say, and what the reality of the situation truly is. And the Jews that are living in Israel want to live in peace as well. They don't want to have this constant threat. But the fact that the news is showing one thing and they're living another way, and we're only seeing one side of it, yeah. we need people to go there to understand that's the reality on the ground. They want to live their lives too. They don't want to be under constant threat. When you're being told one side of it, you're never going to get the other side from the media. You have to go there to experience that and understand how true it really is. But you know what's so exciting? You had a question there. You asked your Well, your I just question. wanted to add on to something you said a moment ago, which <laughs> was that, you know, we need to teach our children, we need to teach our families at home. Right. And, um, you know, I don't want to say that to say that we should just roll over and, and let uh, all the infiltration and things like that that are happening on campuses. I know you're doing a great job of, of reaching out to college campuses and, and other places, um, but, you know, when we realize what's happening, when we see those things, I want to encourage our viewers, you know, make sure that you don't just rely on the schools and what's happening there, you know, make sure that right. you share with your families, you know, uh, tune into TCT, we're telling you the truth about what's happening in Israel. Don't just rely on, uh, you know, what the mainstream media is going to put out there. Um, but, you know, do whatever you can to uplift Israel, support Israel in your own home. You know, we, we can talk about all these negative things uh, and what may be happening. Um, but we don't have to just let that happen. You know, we can uh, make our own choice at home. And I, I want to say, ask something else too, is that, uh, you know, you talked about uh, how safe it is to go to Israel. Right. And when, I'm, when we're talking about some of these things that are misinformation and, and, and people that are going in and kind of creating their own story and, and kind of twisting what's going on, a lot of the things we hear about Israel is, and, and, and why people may not want to go there is because of everything that's happening over there. Oh, there's bombings all the time and right. they're in war and, and, you know, why would I want to go into a place like that? But, you know, when you said it's, it's safe to go over there, that's something that I think a lot of our viewers may think, well, wait a minute, that can't be right because of what I've been seeing. <laughs> but, you know, when, when I've been over there, um, I, I feel the same way. I feel perfectly safe in a lot of ways, uh, uh, more safe than in a lot of our major cities here in the U.S. because, um, it, you know, there are many people there against Israel, as we've been talking about, right. but there's such great security there, it, right. and it's, and it's uh, just a good place that you can go and, and not have to worry about those things that, that the media will make it out to look like. Right. Um, I'll share a little anecdote from when, when I went. Before I went, obviously, safety was a concern for anybody. And of course it was for me because I wanted to tell my family, don't worry about it, it's okay. You know, I, I want to I visit this place. And I asked the coordinator, I said, what is the uh, one issue that I need to worry about when going over there? What's, what's safety going to be like? He said, your biggest safety concern is not getting, you know, too much sun. Take a little sunscreen <laughs> with you. And I laughed, I said, okay. And so we went, and of course it was in the middle of February. So there wasn't a whole lot of sun that week. It was actually more rain and even a little bit of snow near the Lebanon border, which was incredible to see. But as soon as we got off, you know, you felt like you were in the middle of any regular city that you would go to, you know, very westernized country, cars everywhere. Um, you would see, obviously, the IDF soldiers, you know, on the street corners, but they're trained to do that. And the people that live in Israel that are born there, they're trained from the time that they are young, situational awareness. Something that I think we've gotten away from in our country in, in a lot of ways, but you're taught anywhere you go situational awareness. You're always wondering what's, what's going on, where you're going. You're always making sure that you're safe. But anytime that you're there, you don't have to worry about that at all. When we were walking the streets of Israel, Jerusalem especially, uh, all we were thinking about was the next place we were going to see. You know, we didn't have to worry one bit. I was with a group of 40 people. Never once did we have a single issue anywhere we went. We even were about three miles from the Gaza border at one point in time. 
no issues. Now, to say that Israel d that hasn't had issues in the past, of course there have been things. The news shows it. But it's not to say that that's happening every day. I ask my friends all the time, when you see Israel in the news, what are the three things you normally see? Western Wall, IDF soldiers, people running from a bomb that's been thrown, something like that. It doesn't happen every day. It really doesn't. It's so rare. The recent issues with the, uh, you were talking about the stabbing into Fada at one point in time, um, that came up a few weeks back. Very random, you know, just like a shooting in Chicago or LA or New York or anywhere could happen. That happened there once or twice, a few times in the middle of October. Nothing since then. People have businesses to run. They understand we can't have this going on all the time. And they talk to people, say, listen, all right, this foolishness can't be happening. But it's an incredibly safe country. You want to walk around all the time. You want to see everywhere. You can go out at night, go with groups, have fun. You'll never experience an issue there. It's mm. so wonderful. Mm. Well, you know, the Bible is not a religious book. When you talk about you know, religion, people make the mistake of thinking the Bible is about religion. The Bible's not about religion. It's about transcendent principles that work wherever you apply them. And one of the transcendent principles is the truth sets you free. Right. As soon as you know what the truth is, then you're able to operate in it. You know, you cannot believe, unfortunately, a lot of people watching this program know what I'm talking about. You cannot believe a lot of things that you read in American media, for example. Right. For Chicago. I mean, if you see something in Chicago about a shooting, it is usually something that has a, a racial orientation to it or where are the police officers involved, right? They don't tell you about the thousands of murders that take place in Chicago on a regular basis. Nobody mentions that in the media because they didn't get covered. Right. Well, it's the same thing with Israel. I mean, one thing happens in Israel. One Israeli citizen gets stabbed. It's all over the news because, you know, People just don't understand that that's how the media works. Right. We need to be aware of what the truth of the matter is. Right. And the only way you can find that out is to go there. And, and Earl, you've been there a numerous of times. But let me just tell you, man, when I got to Israel for the first time, and I've been there numerous <laughs> times, but we believe the Bible is the Word of God, right? And I think most Christians believe that that's the truth. The Bible is the Word of God. So when you're reading in the Bible and you see where it says, Jesus went to the garden, now, when you go to the Garden of Gethsemane, right. <laughs> when, you talk, when you read about the Mount of Olives and you go there and when you're standing there looking at the River Jordan, you're going, wow, this, this, this is it. I'm here. This is real. And that makes a, an in, entirely different perspective when you come back home again and read the Bible and go, wow, I was right there in the Garden of Eden where you pray. We hear people say so often, and it's, it's become a cliche, but it's so true. The Bible truly comes alive. Yes. And every pastor that I talk to, every conference that I go to, <clears throat> anybody that's been, they come back and they say, listen, I know you hear it every time, but the Bible truly comes alive. The places that you see, you understand how things happen there. To be in the Garden of Gethsemane was so oh. serene. To, to be standing there in the midst of the trees that were there 2,000 years ago. Yeah. You know, there, there's some that talk about, you know, <clears throat> these trees heard the prayers of Jesus. You know what's and ironic? It, it, it just it inspires you. I mean, that's where I had one of the most cru crucial moments of my trip to realize the decision that Jesus made to follow God's will, to crucify himself, mm -hmm. to allow them to crucify him, to take on that sin for us. To realize that decision made there, it, it brings it all in perspective for you. You, you know, I know you got something to say, but no, you, I don't we have to remember that Jesus got a lot was to human say. being. Mm -hmm. Jesus was very God, but Jesus was very man. Yes, he was. And so he knows exactly how we feel, right. which means I know how he felt. Right. I'm sitting here in the Garden of Gethsemane deciding whether or not I'm going to allow myself to be killed for a bunch of people. You know, I used to be a black, monk, you know, a black militant. You're and still you black. Huh? I'm You're still, still black, black, but I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not a Muslim, man. <laughs> but I could imagine, man, going and, and kneeling down in Times Square somewhere saying, am I going to allow myself to be killed for a bunch of white people? <laughs> no! <laughs> so, and, I'm and, still white. Uh, still I, white? I'm almost white. Look at it. Look. You are? Right, go ahead. I'm sorry. Earl, you're white? I'm, I, I never noticed that. <laughs> Since we're brothers. Right. Well, we had the same father, different Look, mothers absolutely, the same father. Absolutely. But the point is, you know, you have to, you have to, you see this and you understand what Jesus went through, and then there you are where he went through it. And if you put it in the human terms that we that he was human, then you can really understand what he went through, and, and it does make the Bible come alive. 
That's great. And when we talk about the Bible coming alive, just share with us a little bit because, you know, as you're talking, I'm thinking back to when I've been to Israel. I know you guys are probably doing the same and, and thinking of some of our favorite sites. You know, we're picturing in our minds what you see there. But tell us a, a, a few of the sites that people can expect to see when they get there. You know, of course, we talk about that's where Jesus walked. And, mm -hmm. well, some of the stuff is the same as 2,000 years ago. But, you, you know, what are the favorite sites that people see or what, what are some of your favorite places over there? Well, um, as soon as we got there, we went up to uh, to, to Capernaum, mm -hmm. and to see where you know Peter lived. Um, there's now where they believe that he lived. There's a there's a Catholic church that's built right over the top, and to know that that's where miracles are performed, you can see that spot. Uh, the synagogue that was there, that's a uh, first or second century synagogue. Um, it's it's in the area where the original synagogue would have been. Um, one of the most impactful places for us to know. There's a lot of places they think that they can say Jesus was here, Jesus might have been there, but the one that they've recently discovered that they can say without a doubt Jesus would have been here is the synagogue in Magdala. Mm. And we went there close to sunset, so we didn't have a whole lot of time there. But we're standing in the middle of the synagogue and sitting on some of the sitting on some of the steps on the side, and I'm sitting there thinking, Wow. I can say with almost certainty that Jesus was sitting here. And <laughs> it, if I think about it too long, I'll well up just like I did at that point in time because uh, it just it hits brother. you so hard. Well up, but to know that at the Mount of Olives with those trees that they were there, um, when, you're, when you're walking through, you know, whether it's at the Holy Sepulchre or the Garden Tomb, you know, we want to talk about that, which one it may be. Ultimately, the fact that Jesus is risen is all that matters. But to know that he would have been at one of those places. Um, when you go to the Sea of Galilee, uh, I, I laughingly told my friends, I said, I'm looking forward to this most because if the boat's low enough, I want to try to put my foot out on the water, you know, just kind of feel it. Now, granted, I'd, I'd sink, obviously, I'm a sinner. But it was so cool to be out there on just that pristine water in the calm of it and know that in the midst of those storms, Jesus was there for us. And to know that, you know, he walked in that water. <laughs> that's that. That's for sure where that happened. And you know, many places like that that you can go. Um, you know, with the Jordan River. You know, to know that he was baptized there. Any of those pl places that you go, you know that he would have been there. Can they say this exact spot versus that spot? Maybe not. But you know that he was there. You know what the Bible tells you, and you know that it's true. So it was. It's, I remember it's teaching wonderful. on the sitting on the side of the mountain. You know, with the Sea of Galilee, and you're sitting here where, where Jesus taught the multitudes on the Sea of Galilee. I remember sitting there doing that, thinking, you know, he could have been standing right here. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, right. reality becomes real when you get there. The amount of beatitudes. Yeah, the amount of beatitudes. I mean, that, that for for everybody. Oh. Crucial to look over that that mountain and to see where everybody would have been just sitting and listening. To that, to that sermon. I'm sitting here salivating. I can't wait to leave next week. <laughs> you know the ironic part about all of this? You know, the, the Muslims, they have three places to go, Medina being one of them, mm -hmm. but they're required to go once in their lifetime. And if you have Christians in your you're in Orleans, which we know primarily that's what you have, I can't understand how every Christian would not find a way to go there, simply because it is a place that we will feel exactly like you said, and what you said, Ben, and Tom, you, when you were a younger person, you were there. It is something special about that place. And I know that my, my passport has got so, I've had to go through so many passports. And I, every time I go, it never fails. When I get to that land, it's something like, it changes me. It makes me feel different. Mm -hmm. I want all of my brothers and sisters to feel that. Have you ever had a, a, your station, your network, have you ever put together a tour going over and uh, maybe to Israel? If, you know, we used to do that, and it, it's been a while since uh, we've had the opportunity. That's how I had the opportunity to go when I was younger. And um, so we wow. did that, and it was great. We got to bring many of our viewers over. And um, we, we haven't had the opportunity to be able to do that for a long time, but, uh, you know, there's... Let's, let's talk to you about yeah. doing that again. I think, we can, I think yeah. we can help you out with that one. <laughs> Ministry of Absolutely. Tourism, of course. <laughs> you know. Well, it's great, and you know whether or not it be you know through a TCT event, you know there's mm -hmm. there's many opportunities for people to go over there. I know there's tours going on year round, and um, I, yeah, I think it's something that everybody should do. As you mentioned, other uh, religions kind of have a pilgrimage that they it, it's a requirement of their religion, and you know uh, Christianity is so much about freedom and free will that uh, you know there's really not anything like that. Like you have to go see Jerusalem. Them. You have to go see where Jesus right. walked. And uh, so some people don't think about it. But, it, you know, the other side of that freedom, that free will, that grace,
grace that Christ offers is that we should have the desire to do it on our own. It, you know, right, the, right, the, right. the whole right. point is that not, oh, okay, we can sit back and, and not do anything for God, but the it, the whole thing is that we should have that desire. So, it, yeah. you know, that should be something that we should really want to do to feel closer to God, to, to be able to go over and, and make that kind of pilgrimage of our faith. And doesn't cost that much. It really doesn't cost it, that much it, anymore. It, it really doesn't. And I may, if I may, you mentioned a second ago the pa your passport. Yeah. I'd like to say um, one of the th neat tools that we have at the Ministry of Tourism is what we call your passport to Israel. And this is something that we've given to Christians all over the country. And it has information in here telling you about places you'll see, tells you about you know the climate, um, distance to Israel, things like that, how quick of a flight it can be, because it can be really quick. But it, if you call our office or email us, we can get you these passports. And they provide a lot of information for anybody that has never been mm -hmm. looking to go. And um, it can truly help you to prepare. Um, just little tidbits that everybody needs to know before they go to any country like that. But it's, it's a wonderful tool to use. Well, now that I let you use that's mine, new. you can give it back. <laughs> <laughs> that's new. That's, that's yeah, good this idea. is brand new. Absolutely. Wow. Just don't try to get, get in the country with that right there. <laughs> <laughs> you won't be able to stamp that one, yeah, but uh, it, it, it'll help you once whoa, you get into know where right to go. Just, so. yeah. And they can get one of those by uh, going to the website, and I'm Correct. sure I'll give them more information. That's GoIsrael.com. GoIsrael okay. That's, that's exactly and right. And so uh, hopefully they'll uh, put that on the screen for you. I'd encourage you to uh, go there and get some more information about Israel. And um, I want to thank you for being with us today. I want to um, just encourage people again. We, we talked a little bit about that prayer line, 1-800-232-9855, and that number's there for you to call whenever you need, may need prayer, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I'm looking over, and we have so many great uh, prayer partners that are here volunt voluntarily giving of their time just to pray for you, and uh, so I'd encourage you to take advantage of that. You can also uh, pray for Israel while you're at it. You know, that's Please. something that we need Please to do, do for uh, Israel as Christians, and um, if you want a partner in prayer to do that, call the prayer line, and a prayer partner will stand by uh, to pray for you, and pray for us here at TCT. We need your support, we need your prayers, and we need your financial support. So I would encourage you today, if you could stand with TCT to keep programs like this one going out, to keep the truth about Israel, promoting uh, Christianity, promoting Israel, going into not just your home, but into your community around the world. Uh, you can do that by standing with us and sending the very best love gift you can to TCT at P.O. Box 1010, Marion, Illinois, 62959. If you're viewing in Canada today, you can go to uh, TCT P.O. Box 1220 for Erie, Ontario, L2A 5Y2. Or anywhere in the world, you can give a secure donation right online at www.tct. TV, but I would encourage you to do that today. Support this station as uh, we're supporting Israel today. And thank you, everybody, for uh, being with us. Toda shalom. Yes. I learned that right. <laughs> Hebrew words, I learned that right away. Toda shalom. I've been there 20 years, and I don't know that word. So. <laughs> <laughs> did you, did you Already learned it from that book, so you're going to want to pick that up. <laughs> thank you for being with us. God bless. <laughs>